The janitor cleaned the museum by day, unnoticed and ignored. Yet, a hidden passion burned within him. When the last visitor left, his transformation began. The world would soon discover the stunning truth behind the quiet janitor, a truth that would leave them speechless. Hi everyone, welcome to Tales Unveiled. Today, I'm excited to share a new story with you. Let's get started. Leo wasn't the kind of man who stood out. He was part of the museum's nighttime landscape, his footsteps echoing through the empty halls long after the art admirers had gone home. Mop in hand, he knew the stubborn stains on the marble floor better than the brush strokes on the canvases lining the walls. Art, the kind with fancy frames and confusing descriptions, was for other people. He was just the janitor. But down a forgotten hallway, tucked behind cleaning supplies and lost umbrellas, there was a secret. The janitor's closet was more than dusty shelves and old rags. It was Leo's sanctuary, not from the work, but from the world that had turned his dreams to dust. Once upon a time, he'd seen colors differently, had yearned to capture the way light danced on a stranger's face or the fierce beauty of a storm cloud. Now those dreams seemed as out of place as a stray paintbrush in a bucket of bleach. Tonight, there was a buzz in the air, whispers of a visiting critic, one of those names that made museum directors sweat. Leo barely looked up from scrubbing a stubborn scuff mark, figuring these art world types lived in a different stratosphere entirely. He'd perfected the art of becoming invisible, blending into the background as thoroughly as the worn spot on the carpet he was trying to vanquish. But some nights, when the museum was quiet and his soul ached with a loneliness he couldn't name, Leo let himself break the rules. Discarded materials became his canvas, an old lipstick, a shattered powder compact, the dregs of spilled coffee. He painted on scraps of cardboard, bold strokes that mocked the pretentious paintings he walked past every day. It was his private rebellion, a splash of defiance in a world that valued neat labels and hefty price tags more than the fire in someone's heart. A storm erupted that night, the kind that rattled the old museum's windows and sent echoes booming through the grand galleries. In his closet, Leo barely noticed. He was lost in the act of creation, an explosion of vibrant blues and angry reds that spilled across the cardboard in his hands. It was as if the storm outside had unleashed something within him, a long-buried need to leave his mark. Later, he'd barely remember cleaning up, shoving crumpled sketches into a corner, hiding his rebellion from the harsh fluorescent lights. The museum, once asleep, now hummed with frantic energy as news spread about the stranded critic. Important people scurried around, their voices tinged with thinly disguised panic. This wasn't a mere inconvenience. This was a crisis. A famous critic trapped in the museum overnight? The potential for disaster or a scandalous publicity stunt was too delicious to ignore. Leo clocked out with damp hands and a weary ache in his bones. Another night done, another invisible shift in a place filled with treasures that weren't meant for him. Yet, as he stepped out into the rain-soaked morning, there was a lightness to his step that surprised him. The painting, fueled by frustration, had left him feeling oddly defiant. It was a small flame flickering against the relentless weight of the ordinary. He couldn't have known it then, but that hidden corner of the museum the one filled with cleaning supplies and forgotten umbrellas, was about to become the center of an unexpected discovery. The critic, the infamous, sharp-tongued Simon Sharp, had spent a restless night, his path leading him to a place far removed from the museum's prized collections. The morning revealed the chaos left in the storm's wake. Leo, summoned back earlier than usual, surveyed the scene with a practiced eye, Downed branches, a small leak in the ceiling, the usual post-storm disarray. The frantic voices whispered about the great Simon Sharp, trapped in the labyrinth of the museum all night. He tried to melt into the background as he mopped up puddles, his ears straining to pick up snippets of gossip. Sharp, it seemed, had been found in a state of near-apoplectic fury, 
muttering about artistic vandalism and insulting installations. Leo grimaced. That sounded, uh, ominous. Had someone discovered his closet sanctuary? A cold wave of dread washed over him. He wasn't built for confrontation and scandal. His masterpieces were defiant scribbles in the night, never meant for eyes harsher than his own. The rest of the day was a blur. People he usually never saw scurried past, eyes narrowed in suspicion. The museum director, a woman with a voice like sharpened ice, glared in Leo's general direction more than once. His hands shook as he refilled soap dispensers, the remnants of his rebellion twisting like a knot in his stomach. By afternoon, the rumor mill was in overdrive. The whispers were no longer about the storm, but about a shocking discovery. Sharp, notorious for tearing aspiring artists to shreds with his scathing reviews, had apparently stumbled upon something extraordinary. Leo's mop stilled, mid-stroke. It couldn't be... Could it? He knew his work was raw, fueled by a kind of bitter desperation, but he was no fool. It wasn't gallery-worthy, not in the world of polished sculptures and pretentious performance art. Then, a snatch of conversation drifted his way. Audacity. Raw genius. The words hung in the air like an accusation. Panic flared, hot and sharp. He had to see for himself had to know if his world was about to crumble or explode in a way he couldn't even fathom. The gallery where whispers said the artwork was displayed usually held an exhibit of abstract sculptures Leo found baffling. Today, it was transformed. Under the harsh spotlight, instead of polished metal and cryptic shapes, was one of his cardboard creations. The vibrant strokes, the defiance barely hidden behind the rough medium, seemed out of place yet undeniably compelling amidst the sterile space. A crowd had gathered. Curious onlookers, art students scribbling furiously in notebooks, and museum staff hovering like nervous vultures. But the figure that commanded attention was Simon Sharp. Leo would have recognized the sneer and the pompous stance anywhere. Sharp was gesturing wildly, his voice echoing in the hushed space. A revelation, a raw, untamed voice challenging the very foundations. Sharp's words washed over Leo, a confusing mix of praise and a strange kind of analysis that left him feeling both exposed and oddly vindicated. The janitor's closet creations he dismissed as angry scribbles were being dissected like archaeological treasures. A figure pushed through the crowd, a young woman with sleek dark hair and an air of entitlement, the museum director's daughter, if Leo remembered correctly. She strode towards the painting, her gaze calculating. It's mine, she declared, her voice cutting through the gallery's murmur. An experiment. I left it unfinished. A ripple of surprise washed over the crowd. Leo felt a flicker of anger, not just at the lie, but at himself, for his own cowardice in the face of it. Intriguing, Sharp drawled, his eyes narrowed as he assessed the young woman. This unexpected turn of events was far more captivating than a lowly janitor being the artist. Here was a narrative he could work with, a rebellious socialite defying expectations. Is there any proof, Miss... Just as Sharp was about to speak, Leo felt a surge of something unexpected. It wasn't courage, exactly, but a bone-deep weariness of hiding. He took a hesitant step forward. It's not hers, he said, his voice barely above a whisper, yet somehow cutting through the gallery's expectant hush. It's mine. All eyes turned towards Leo. The museum director let out an exasperated sigh, her carefully constructed composure cracking. Leo, I don't know what you think you're playing at, she began, her voice a hiss. It's the truth, Leo mumbled, his heart pounding against his ribs. He was a man used to scrubbing stains, not commanding center stage. I paint, sometimes, in the closet, 
Sharp's eyebrows shot up in surprise. The janitor? That's unexpected and interesting, he said in a pleased tone. This was a much juicier story than a rich kid trying to take credit for someone else's work. Sharp scoffed, but there was a hint of begrudging admiration in his eyes. Art for art's sake, how refreshing, he muttered, more to himself than anyone else. The press, sensing a compelling story, descended. Leo, bewildered, found himself answering hesitant questions, explaining how discarded cosmetics and spilled cleaning fluids became his unlikely tools of expression. There was a strange sort of fascination in their eyes, as if they expected him to sprout another head or suddenly break into a tap-dancing routine. The museum director hovered nearby, her expression a mix of anger and calculating curiosity. Leo had been an invisible cog in her well-oiled machine. Now, he was a disruption, a wild card that could bring both unpredictable disaster and potential fame to her hallowed institution. News of the janitor artist spread like wildfire. Art critics debated whether he was a genius or a fluke. Collectors offered outrageous sums for his cardboard creations. Leo's quiet life became a whirlwind of interviews, exhibitions he barely understood, and endless discussions about whether his work was a statement on class, consumerism, or simply a reflection of a soul trapped in the wrong life. Then came the offer, a residency in New York, a solo show, all the trappings of a successful artist. He stood in his closet-turned studio, surrounded by a frenzy of activity, and felt a wave of exhaustion wash over him. It was everything he'd ever dreamed of, Yet it felt hollow, a spotlight shining on a life that wasn't his own. Leo turned down the offer. The art world buzzed with confusion. Sharp penned a scathing critique about wasted potential. Yet, for Leo, it was the easiest decision he'd ever made. He went back to his night shifts, his mop, and the quiet hum of the empty museum. He'd tasted the intoxicating rush of recognition and found it fleeting. True satisfaction wasn't in the spotlight glare, but in the gritty joy of remaining true to himself, paintbrush in hand, even when the world wasn't looking. Loved this story? Tap that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. Let us know how this story made you feel with a single word in the comments. While you're at it, check out the video currently on your screen. See you next time.